welcome back to our API series and I just want to to share with you how we're going to try to structure our data. Uh, of course I shared with you in the in our first video however um, I just want to let you in on the big details about this before we dive into our code. So classic press by default gives us our posts, it gives us media, it gives us pages, it gives us comments as default post types uh, to use. However, we can create our own post types and quite easily by writing a few lines of code. Why would we need our own custom post type? It's because we're going to be collecting new data and I don't want to mix it with uh, all the other things. However, we shall be able to structure that post type and then send it to our endpoint or what we call our namespace. So, this is how we create uh, our own custom post type. So we're going to go to the right plugin and the first thing that we're going to do is uh, you know, make a function that creates with the name of uh, create post type. So then the next thing that we're going to do is actually we're going to hook into this by adding action and then in the add action we're going to just say whenever we initialize Whenever we initialize classic press, then we should call this function the create post type function. So when we save that, we'll be, oh, we need to add this in brackets. And when we save that, that will be ready to go. So the next thing that we're going to do uh, right now is uh, we're going to call a, fun a function in WordPress, which is uh, actually called register post type. That will take in a, a number of variables in there. So first things first, it's going to take the name of our custom post type, which we're going to call villagers for now. And then the next option that it takes is that it will take in an array of uh, information actually. So this array of information includes uh, a couple of things. Um, First and foremost, in this array, we're going to we're going to collect the labels. The labels are basically how the labels are, are the things that allow us to to call things like you see how we have pages here, add all pages, add new, or um, if we quickly go to pages here, this uh, this information we see here as pages and all pages and add new and edit and quick edit all this information can be shared through the labels so as for the labels we're also going to have an array of those labels and we give in the name the name which is going to be villages and then uh, we shall also give something that is uh, really needed which is uh, the singular name so that when we are calling for one item uh, we have that already in. So we're going to just give that and we are going to call that a village. So after the singular name we'll escape, uh, we'll go out of the labels section. We're going to make it public because we want this to be accessible to the public um, and this we shall activate it by saying true. If we changed it to false then the public wouldn't be able to query this. So we'll leave it as, as true and then we will just say if, whether it has an archive and for now I'll set it to true and leave it as that. And then the other thing that is important is what happens when we are going, when we want to have a slug at the end of the day. So this requires an array and inside here we'll need a, an argument for a slug. And the slug we're going to just call it villages. So now that we've closed off our arrays, all that is closed up well, arrays done, we've executed this, we're now going to just save this. And what happens is when we go back and reload our page here, our villages coming in here, it has a default icon, we have villages, we can add a new village, as you see. And if you look here, we have the slug, 
which is villages for us here. Now we have a couple of things here that are still uh, saying something different like add new post or whatever. But we're going to correct that by adding more labels uh, into our into our our post type registration, and that will help us clear all those other things that are, are quickly that are needed.